That would be a pretty shitty way to write a spec. Because of graceful degradation, you can add both. So this is the video element in HTML5. Very straightforward syntax. Opening video tag, closing video tag. And in between, you put your fallback content. And by fallback content, what I mean is browsers who don't understand the video tag will display what's in between the opening and closing tags. Browsers that do understand the video element there won't display the fallback content. This is how browsers work anyway, right? If you invented a new element, you called it foo, right? You, you opened your foo tag, you closed your foo tag. Browsers will just ignore it and display whatever is inside the opening and closing tag. So older browsers, browsers that don't support video, will just display whatever is inside the opening and closing video tag. So what do you put in between the opening and closing video tag? You put your Flash movie. So you have HTML5 video, you have Flash video. In harmony, peace, rainbows, butterflies. <laughs> and because, because the HTML5, uh, the, the Flash video can be embedded using, say, the object element, right? Object, embed. Embed is legal, by the way, now in HTML5. The way that object works, is that it also accepts fallback content between the opening and closing tags. So what you can do is you can then put a final layer in there and say, you know what, if you don't understand video and you don't understand Flash, here's a link to download, right? And because it's the same content model, you can flip, flip them around. You can open up an object tag, and then as your fallback content, have the video element from HTML5. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you want to serve up Flash video or Flash audio to uh, desktop browsers, but let's say there's some sort of handheld touchscreen device that doesn't support Flash. <laughs> you, put, you put your video or your audio element in between the opening and closing object tags. It's not a war. Right? It's not either or. It's not a binary difference. You use both. Though I think if you're only using HTML5 to put video on the web right now, that's kind of silly. But if you're only using Flash, that's probably kind of silly as well. You should be using both. Yeah. Okay, there's a problem with using both, which is then the time it takes you to encode the video into a Swift file versus encoding it into whatever format you need. And actually, let's face it, it's not one format. It's multiple formats. And this has nothing to do with technology. It's nothing to do with the specification. This is all to do with lawyers and patents mm -hmm. and other things that are the enemies of the web. <laughs> because some browsers support some formats and some browsers support different formats. But that's okay, because in HTML5, Using graceful degradation, you can specify these different formats using the source element. So instead of using a source attribute, use the source element. And so here I've put an H.264 video to begin with in the source element. If a browser doesn't understand that, it moves on to the next one. Okay, well, do you understand AUG video? Okay, that I understand. If it doesn't understand either, then, you know, give it the Flash movie. If it doesn't understand that, give it the download link. And what you end up with is essentially uh, your own little sort of uh, inception plot right here in HTML. You've got four <laughs> levels going down. Right, so there's four possible scenarios here. There's, a, video, there's an, uh, a browser that understands video and supports H.264, a browser that understands video and supports R, a browser that doesn't understand video but does support Flash, a browser that doesn't understand either video or Flash. Right, four levels of graceful degradation. I wish we didn't have to do the different encodings for the formats. Like I said, it's not an issue with the spec, it's not an issue with the technology, it's an issue with browser makers, it's an issue with uh, patents, laws, and it, it sucks. It absolutely it sucks. Firefox. Sorry? It doesn't work in Firefox. Oh, it works in Firefox. No, it will look for a media source and it's more of a and see if that's the empty screen of the video. Yeah, turn it around the other way. Put, put the odd source for first and then put the MP4. Yeah. There There's you go. There's a module for that. There's a module. That's, that's, that's the new, there's an app for that, right? Um, yes, a bunch of people have written some code that's like you know, bulletproof of video embedding that goes into more detail than this, but essentially covers all the possible use cases and the various browser things. There's actually a third format on the way that's kind of the bastard love child of AUG and MP4 that's being worked on by various browser makers, and hopefully that will be the way forward. We won't have to do all this hacking around and having to figure out which one do we have to put first, which one do we have to put second, all that kind of thing. For now, we have to because of patents, because of legalities. And, uh, and that sucks. And the reason, the reason why that sucks, the reason why you want to have one format, right? You want to have one video format, you want to have one audio format, uh, is because it's, it's more likely to take off when you have one format, thanks to a design principle called Metcalfe's Law. It's the, the inventor of Ethernet, right? That the value of the network is proportional to the square of the number of connected users. It is essentially talking about telecommunications networks, 
but it's true of many things. So the classic example I use is a fax. Who bought the first fax machine? Why? Right? Because <laughs> it's not much use, right? The value is basically zero. Um, but as more and more fax machines come on the market, then the value increases, and it increases by this uh, square root value. And it's the same on the web. Email works because email works across all these different platforms. Uh, chat clients have been more problematic because the networks didn't talk to each other, right? You had AIM, and you had MSN, and you had ICQ, and that was really problematic because of Metcalfe's law. And what we're seeing now with video is the same thing. Because there's these different formats, we have to jump through these hoops and use these modules to make video and flash and all this stuff works. We aren't making full use of Metcalfe's law. Um, and, and that is a shame. The final design principle from HTML5 uh, I'm not even going to illustrate with any code, because there isn't really any code to illustrate this. This is the one that just defines how the hell are we going to work together, right? Like I said, it's like the odd couple. W3C, what WG, different ideas, different, different goals. How do they decide what to do? This is my favorite design principle, the priority of constituencies, which is basically saying, when we have an issue, when we need to decide solution A or solution B, how do we measure it? How do we